Lord, for the Lord is good. God's mercy endures forever. Israel now declare, God's mercy endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my song, and has become my salvation. Joy and salvation echo in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord acts valiantly. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord acts valiantly. The Lord indeed punished me sorely, but he did not hand me over to death. This is the gate of the Lord. Here the righteous may enter. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. A re reading from 1 Corinthians. Now I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaim to you, which you in turn received, in which you also stand, through which you are being saved, if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I hand it on to you as the first importance when I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas and then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than five hundred brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he also appeared to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether it was I or they, so we proclaim, and you have come to believe. Word of God, word of life. Please stand for the gospel acclamation. According to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Now, when the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, and Salome bought spices, and so they might go and anoint Jesus' body. And very early on that first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, Who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, 
for terror and amazement had seized them, and they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. You may be seated. <clears throat> Well, alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Our Lenten journey is over. Our Lenten fast is done. We got some good food after service today. We've had a long journey, well, for six weeks, but especially this past week, we've moved from Passion or Palm Sunday. We have celebrated Monday, Thursday. We've walked with Jesus on Good Friday, and now we complete the journey once again as we joyfully proclaim that Jesus has risen. And we really need to do that every year, because don't we forget about that sometimes? You know, our lives get very complicated. There's joys, but there's also difficulties, and sometimes we can just get so bogged down. So once again, we joyfully proclaim that Jesus has risen, and we celebrate once again the promise of eternal life. Eternal life. Now, as I reflect on our Holy Week journey, I'm reminded of a story that I heard once about Pontius Pilate and Joseph of Arimathea. Okay? Joseph of Arimathea was the one who gave the tomb for Jesus if you remember. So Pontius Pilate and, and Joseph of Arimathea were having a conversation. And Pontius Pilate says to Joseph, I just don't get it. I don't get it. You are one of the richest men around in this whole community. And you paid all this money, so much money, to have a beautiful tomb cut into the rock for you and your family. You had it to be ready for you. You spent lots of money. And now you want to give it to this Jesus? And Joseph replied, it's only for the weekend. <laughs> da <-dum. laughs> Now I'm sure that Joseph had no idea that it was only for the weekend. Jesus kept telling people that it was, but think about it. Would you believe it? Probably not. Would we believe it if we lived back then? They didn't really comprehend that Jesus was going to be raised from the dead. You know, the followers of Jesus were completely devastated after Jesus was crucified and died and buried. You know, their Savior, their Messiah was dead. They thought they were going to get a real king as their Savior who would free them from the Romans. So now what, they, what were they to do? And we'll find out a little bit about that as we go through the lessons for the Easter season. Because, you know, Easter's not just one day. It's a season. It goes all the way up to Pentecost, which is, Mar uh, which is May 19th this year. Okay. But they were devastated. They didn't know what to do. And the women who came to the tomb and found it empty, they said nothing to anybody because they were so afraid. What had happened? But for us, my friends, to put it in the um, words of Paul Harvey, which some of us might know who that was, <laughs> We know the rest of the story, okay? Those, those, those little laughs were people that are older like I am, okay, that know who Paul Harvey was. We know the rest of the story. Jesus rose from the dead. Jesus was not held captive by death. He couldn't be bound by the tomb. He brought new life to all of creation, Jesus, as it were, broke out of the tomb. And what did he do? He made all things new. That's why we have flowers and banners, and we can sing hallelujah again because everything is made new, and boy, do we need to remember that. 
We need to remember that. Every single one of us sitting here has our own situations. Sometimes we call them crosses, you know. And we need to remember that Jesus has made everything new. And so as followers of Jesus, as people baptized into new life, that's what our baptism is all about. And that's why we renew it, particularly on, this, on uh, Easter and Holy Saturday. And that's why we remember our baptism is that we're baptized into new life. We're baptized into the death and resurrection of Jesus. We are no longer bound by death. A lot of times we don't think too much about that. But there are times in our lives where we do think about how we feel bound by death. When loved ones die, when loved ones are sick, when we ourselves are sick, you know, that's when it becomes reality, okay? And that's why we need Easter to remember that we have new life. We have eternal life in Jesus, and we need to remember that, and we can hold on to that. Now, I'd, I would invite us, as we move into this Easter season, to ponder a question that will help us to know that we are new in Jesus. Here's the question. What are the tombs in our own lives? What are the tomb, what's the tomb in my life that I don't need anymore? What are the tombs in our lives that we don't need anymore? We don't have to be held bound by it. You know, Joseph said it's only for a weekend. Okay, it's not going to be forever. So ponder this in these next weeks. What in my life, what in my life keeps me captive? What in my life keeps me held down from experiencing joy in my life? What in my own life is keeping me buried in a tomb every day? You know, that just, just keeps us down. You know, is it a tomb of anger? Is it a tomb of fear? Is it a tomb of uncertainty? Is it a tomb of despair? Is it a tomb of hopelessness? Is it a tomb of worry? Is it a tomb of failure where we feel like we've failed in the past or we feel like we're going to fail in the future and it keeps us from doing something that we ought to do? Is it a tomb of resentment? Whatever that tomb might be, or the tombs for each of us, remember that Jesus broke out of the tomb. And we can break out of those things in our life that keep us bound, that keep us in the tomb. Jesus promised for us today. And we have to celebrate it all the time. And in fact, every Sunday that we celebrate is really a little Easter, okay? Because we come together to remember that Jesus rose, Jesus lives, and promises us that he's with us forever. Jesus' promise to us today is that because he lives, because he's broken open his tomb, our daily tombs can be broken open also and just discarded. And we might have to reflect upon it again the next day and the next day, but Jesus is with us to help us do that, to let go of the things that keep us bound and that keep us buried in a tomb. Once again on this Easter, Jesus invites us to put our trust in him as our risen, living Savior. No matter what our struggles might be, we don't have 
to live with our tombs anymore because of Jesus. We don't have to live with them for a weekend. We don't have to live for the, with them forever. Jesus is alive. And so as we remember and reflect on our Lenten into Easter journey, please remember this. The cross makes peace with our past. As a people in the whole world, as a community, as individuals, the cross makes peace with our past. And thanks be to God, the resurrection recreates our future. The resurrection recreates our future. It's life. It's God's love that no matter what happens, God is with us. Jesus is with us. And the part of the proof of that is he went through all the things that we do in his suffering and death. He was, you know, he became fully human. He experienced what we experience. The resurrection recreates our future. So remember, the cross makes peace with our past. The resurrection recreates our future. And so as Easter people, let us take to heart these words found in the letter of Paul to the Philippians. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Do not worry about anything, but in everything, let your requests be known to God. Let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen.